Welcome back to Bloom. When it comes to the science and art of longevity, nutrition plays a huge role. Joining me now is longevity dietitian, gut health expert, and the author of Healthy Cooking for High Performers, Ella DeVar. Ella, it is so great to see you. Likewise, Gail, thanks for having me. So Ella, there's been so much emerging information when it comes to longevity, mm -hmm. really at the cellular level. Tell mm -hmm. me about that. I know every day we hear different news about nutrition science and longevity research, things like mTOR, NAD, NMN, and then there's methylation and telomeres. And I do my best to catch up with all the science. And my job truly is, is to translate all of the research and nutrition scientific evidence into practical daily advice that all of us can start acting on right away. And here's the, the gist of it. Make sure that every time you eat and every time you look at your plate, it contains some of the colors, the col colorful vegetables, at least three to four colorful vegetables a day, really help us to take advantage of all those recommendations. The polyphenols, antioxidants, for example, glutathione becoming very popular these days. And it's so easy to get it from green leafy vegetables. You'll be surprised, but bok choy, asparagus, celery are all translated into um, compounds such as glutathione and even NAD. Okay, and so, th and then th there's also a lot, a lot of talk about anti-inflammatory diets because mm -hmm. people think that they're gaining weight as in fat, yes. but they're really just keeping hold of a lot of water and inflammation. Inflammation, yeah, and this is really truly key to l higher chances of longevity and making sure that we're lowering inflammation in our body. And how do we do that? I teach my clients, every time you lift the fork, you have a chance to improve your health and lower inflammation. So don't miss out on that chance and make sure that every time you eat, you're eating um, nutrient-dense foods. I mentioned dark leafy greens, but then there's also colorful vegetables like sweet potatoes or beets or carrots or even berries. You know, the brighter the color, the more antioxidant it has. And I always like to say, if it has the potential to stain your clothes, then that's the one that you should <laughs> go for because of all these bright colors and the polyphenols that are responsible for that. My favorite when it comes to berries are pomegranates. They help to improve your gut health and microbiome. Cranberries, highest in vitamin C, which is the most potent antioxidant to reduce chances of infections. And then there's also cherries. Cherries are high in uric acid, which helps us to prevent gout and lower inflammation and you know anything else that you love. And if we really um, start with um, um, choosing those instead of the things that we like for, sn for a snack for example right if you're someone who's always on the go make sure that you choose or you bring with you let's say celery sticks or uh cherry tomatoes or cucumber slices right and that's already an upgrade that's already a step into um, the direction where longevity is yeah i was going to say a lot of what you do for your clients is you know you're talking to high performers people that yeah. are busy they don't have a lot of time for prep work so what are some tips that you would suggest that we could do to incorporate these foods into our diet without a lot of laborious effort of like cutting and slicing and preparing yeah. well i always like to say if you fail to prepare prepare to fail so it, all it takes is a little bit of intention right so you're waking up in the morning and every time you look at food what should i be eating where is the chance to create improvements for example uh, green tea is higher in antioxidants sometimes than coffee and creating variety of those antioxidants into your diet is a good start and then also eating sometimes people could just like eat eggs and bread and I always say make sure you add some sauerkraut, add some um, colorful vegetables like spinach and avocado and that creates a rainbow on your plate. And then same thing for lunch. It's okay to have a sandwich once in a while, but make sure that it, you don't eat it every day. Make sure that sometimes you choose a soup and a salad next to it, right? And that's what creates the difference. And same thing for dinner. You know, all of my recipes are never longer than 30 minutes because I love cooking and all of my uh, recipes are nutrient dense, but I love efficiency. I always make sure that every ingredient that I choose is nutrient dense and that's what makes it so delicious and so easy. And you also mm. say we need to be mindful when we eat. Yes, that's really uh, this huge part of longevity research that it's not just the food. You know how my uh, mentor used to say, it's not, if, even if you eat all the broccoli in the world and you hate yourself or your life, you're not going to be healthy. Mindful living is really about embracing this lifestyle of, you know, 
a gratitude, an appreciation, lowering your perception of stress or changing your perception of stress, really what gives you stress and anxiety and focusing on gratitude and appreciation. I love also mindful eating practices to prevent overeating, which is a huge thing for, you know, that causes inflammation and obesity. Taking five deep breaths before eating, really bringing more mindfulness into the dish and that could lead to eating less and enjoying more. And it's such a cheap and easy strategy. <laughs> I love it. Ella, thank you so much. You're so good. All right, we're going to post this on bloomtampabay.com and stick around because Ella.